So the next caller we have is going to be Derek in North Carolina. Derek, thank you so much for being patient. You've been on hold for a while. And Derek is a Christian and would like to talk about the fact that early Christians recorded the crucifixion. And this is a fave topic of yours, Paul. So I get to mostly listen again, probably. Hi, Derek. Can you hear us? Welcome to the line. Yeah. Yes, I can. Can you hear me? We can. And we're so excited. So what's your best evidence for Christianity, Derek? Well, the one that I gave was the fact that Christians retain the account of Jesus being crucified by the Romans, which normally would be considered an embarrassment and be, you know, seen as a a defeat, not necessarily a victory. Okay. So if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying that because, because Jesus was crucified and that was in some way embarrassing, uh, the Mm -hmm. fact that that stayed as part of the story means that the story, the rest of it is true. Like there was definitely if Jesus was resurrected or if Jesus was crucified, then there's definitely a resurrection or, or what do you, I'm, yeah. I guess I'm not clear. It sounds like he's saying that well, yeah, the yeah. Christian, the fact that Jesus was what? crucified is embarrassing because I, I guess they caught him and killed him and that's embarrassing. Okay. So they wouldn't, mm-hmm. Christians who were, or at least Jesus followers at the time, wouldn't have recorded a crucifixion because they wouldn't have wanted anybody to know that they got him because that's embarrassing. They would have, I guess, hit it or so derek let me ask is that right? you so Did I get that? Oh, yeah is, is that standing on the right track with what you're saying i think yeah i think she is okay cool so right. let me just ask again. this so, stuff and i don't all right <laughs> so <laughs> just for the sake of this discussion we're going to go with that there was a man named jesus who existed sound cool okay okay so and then for also for the sake of discussion we're going to say that this jesus was definitely executed under the under Pontius Pilate. Sound cool? Yes. Okay. So let's just, so then let's say my, my general position is that it's entirely possible, as I can see it, that, that this, that everything happened after that was a legend. So if you're, if you're going to form a legend or if, or not, if you're consciously forming it, but if a, if a tall tale grows and grows, if there was one historical element to it, it it's pretty tough to yank would it not be very tough to yank out the one element that was historical or, or did you, or, or are you somehow imagining that, or are you basically arguing against Christianity being invented whole cloth? Right. Yeah. I don't, I believe that uh, there's enough evidence to say that Jesus was a historical figure, if nothing else. And, and there are definitely people who believe in, you know, like the Christ myth, myth theory that he wasn't at all historical. Sure. And I just, I don't think that early Jews would have gone out of their way to invent someone okay. and then have him crucified in the story. Okay, so, but let's say I'm granting you that. So, like, okay, so so Jesus was uh, a historical figure, and the Christianity was based upon him, and it was well known that he was crucified. It's not necessarily, I guess you understand that even if everything that happened after that was a legend, in, including the one historical detail that everyone was aware of, doesn't mean that people were including something that were embarrassed the the, the embarrassment factor doesn't come into play would you agree no no i I definitely see where you're coming from absolutely okay so Uh, like and and like just because he was killed i mean that's the most mundane claim that we can make right so everyone in history died which is usually why when i'm talking to someone with the resurrection it's the first thing i grant okay jesus died great because you know everyone else also died so is there something else to you (laughs) that makes makes this make it compelling or, or should tell me that like, what am I missing that, that, that says that this is not a legend after the, after the death part? Uh, well, I was going to tie it into the experience of Paul, who was a, um, avid persecutor of Christians who had really no stake in the Jesus movement, so to speak. And then he, you know, did a complete 180 and converted to Christianity and talks about his experience. I just think that he, I don't know, I just don't know why he would have just completely made up, you know, his experience. So you are aware that, so you said that Paul didn't have a stake in Christianity, but I think we would agree from his own writing that he had a stake. He was definitely against it, right? Like, would you agree with me that Paul was a persecutor yeah, of the church and, and was, if not killing people, at least dragging them to jail and doing bad things to them, right? Right. Okay, so, so you're also aware of, you know, in general, 
people can feel guilty about things, right? People can feel a remorse and, and generally, you know, things can eat away in their mind. Like that's, that's a thing you've experienced, I'm sure. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. So I guess, and then, so that actually lends actually through trauma, like soldiers, for example, who come home, who felt while they were doing terrible things, they felt justified in doing them. But when they come back, they, they get what we call post-traumatic stress, right? Correct. So I guess one of the things that makes sense to me was that if there was someone actively persecuting the church who was doing the terrible things, if we accept him at his word that he was doing, that it seems entirely plausible that his mind, that he suffered some level of post-traumatic stress and that his mind told him, you know, you need to stop dragging these fellow Jews to jail and killing them and, and persecuting them. Does that seem at all plausible to you? Absolutely. The main thing with that is why wouldn't he have just, uh, you know, apologized and been tolerant to Christians while still not believing in Jesus, you know, remaining an Orthodox Jew. Uh, why would he take on that belief, you know, it, it, instead of just saying, you know, what I did was wrong. I shouldn't have been persecuting Christians, but I don't, I still don't believe, you know, that Jesus is the Messiah and all the rest. Right. But you've, but you've like, you've encountered people who do very drastic 180s in their life, right? Like, like not everyone who leaves Christianity does what I do and, you know, creates a YouTube channel to talk about Christianity, right? Like a lot of them, like you described, they become, they stop believing Christianity and they kind of just live their lives and they never think about it again. But I think you would agree that some people do a 180 in their life. Like you, you, you can probably think of examples in your life where someone was all one way and then all the other way, right? Like you can probably think of examples. Oh yeah. Right. I, so it does also sound like myself, you have an acute psychiatric event as well. I'm sorry. I, I like, I like to talk sometimes too. I've been more quiet than I've ever been in my life <laughs> probably, isn't it? <laughs> uh, but it also sounds like Paul, like a lot of people talk about hallucinations. It doesn't even necessarily need to be a hallucination. It sounds like he had an ac acute psychiatric break at some point in time that could have been caused by the stress of, you know, killing people that he knew were innocent. So it could have been for any number of reasons, but a, a, as a result of potentially having post-traumatic stress or a high degree of guilt, this could have been uh, something that occurred to it like happened to him like even within the bible itself it says that he perceived it and no one else around him did so like even is in his recounting other people around him didn't actually perceive or hear or see the specter that appeared to him it was it was solely appearing to him now it would stand to reason that if you were experiencing a high degree of guilt due to you know literally killing and persecuting innocent people who held this set of beliefs after a buildup over a time, if, you, if that starts to weigh on you, you could, you could have that type of event where, you know, you just have a psychiatric break and you have a perception of the, having a perception of the Messiah of the people that you're persecuting could be an internal mechanism that's utilized to sort of expel that guilt and allow you to have the opportunity to essentially atone in an immediate fashion by being absolved by their messiah like there's a million reasons why this could have taken place from a psychological and, and uh cognitive perspective like when you're looking at somebody having a neuro neurologic or a neurological event so it, it is all speculative but it's just as likely that that happened to me as it is especially given the circumstances that paul was in then it would be that the literal jesus appeared to him no one else around him could see it and you know what i mean I don't know. I don't know if any of that means very long. I speed a lot of it off quickly. Right. So I guess, well, I mean, the, re the reason I went walked through all this was like you were saying, well, I can't think of a reason or it seemed to me like you were saying, I can't think of a reason why Paul might have done it. And I guess we were just putting forth uh, whether or not it, you, you accept it as a good reason. Uh, do you kind of think that, oh, that is a possible explanation? Absolutely. And as a Christian, this is actually why I love this station because it all comes from reason and science which i do believe in by the way <laughs> oh, good, good, good 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 yeah and look up i would encourage you to look at second corinthians 12 where paul talks about his experience and he specifically uh, i don't want to lead you too far but he specifically talks about how he he himself doesn't understand his own experience so uh, look at second corinthians 12 uh and kind of maybe because the acts 
descriptions which Shannon was referencing you're absolutely correct he, people weren't seeing it but Paul in his own words describes it and even he says he doesn't really know what's going on there so you know for us to uh, say concretely that we that we know is kind of putting words in his mouth that he didn't oh, that's interesting too because it could have been a retroactive construction for yeah. him to, to wow that's interesting I didn't realize that that like when he recounted it yeah because it could have been like we construct memories and we don't even realize that we're doing it. Like they've, they've done a series of experiments on it. Like that's why eyewitness testimony is such garbage because we, you know, we construct memories based on our individual circumstances. Like when we perceive anything, like how our perceptions are processed is essentially like they go to the centers of the brain that are dedicated to those specific types of perceptions, like either temporal for sound or occipital for vision. And then they're sent up through our midbrain into our hippocampus where they're essentially kind of compared against all of our previous, not only perceptions, but experiences and memories. And then our brain kind of constructs them through that comparison. So that's what deja vu is, for example. It's when you're simultaneously having a comparison experience while having your current experience. So you feel as though you're perceiving a memory in real time. It's a, it's a, it's a real random sort of misfire. I go off on tangents. But yeah, so that's interesting because it could have been a retroactive reconstruction when he was trying to remember back to why he had these changes. It may not have even been something that happened to him in real time. It could just be that his ju his internal justification that he was utilizing when he was reconstructing why he had come to the positions that he was currently holding. So that's interesting, too. I ramble a lot. I find brains interesting. I'm sorry, Derek. But I do have to, so Derek, I have to I let you go. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I hope we gave you something to think about. No. I appreciate that. Definitely. Well, I talk, I talk Thank you so much, much for taking my call. You're a lovely Thanks, to chat Derek. with. Thank you. Sorry I ramble so much. <laughs>